All right, today we're going to be filling out a unit circle by hand, finding sine, cosine, and tangent values, and look at reference angles. So let's go ahead and start. Um, I'm just going to focus on radian measure because I'm probably am guessing that we're pretty good with degrees. We've been doing degrees for a long time, so I'm just, just going to focus on radian measure. So let's count the 30, 60, 90. Um, basically these values come from 30, 60, 90 right triangles. So let's count those radian measures first. Um, so this would be 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, and 12 pi over 6. Okay, going through and reducing the fractions, we know we can't leave them non-reduced. Um, so this just helps us place where the radian measure is. So this turns into pi over 3. This would be pi over 2. This one reduces to 2 pi over 3. That's reduced already. This reduces to pi. That's already reduced. Um, that's a 6. This reduces to 4 pi over 3. This reduces to, let's see, 3 pi over 2. This would be 5 pi over 3. And 11 pi over 6 is already reduced. 12 pi over 6 would be 2 pi. All right, so that places all of our angle measures that uh, are coordinated with 30, 60, 90 right triangles. So now let's place the 45, 45, 90 right triangles. And we're going to count by fourths. Notice how when we're doing the 30, 60, 90s, we count by six. You know, 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, so forth. When we're doing the 45, 45, 90s, we're going to count by fourths. Um, so this is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and 8 pi over 4. Okay, going through and reducing these gives us pi over 2, which shouldn't be a surprise. Or this gives us pi, also another not surprise. 6 pi over 4 gives us 3 pi over 2. 7 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4 gives us 2 pi. So in doing that, um, it just makes it easier. It's usually radians are what students have the most trouble with because they're just unfamiliar. Um, that really helps us place them on the unit circle as we rotate clockwise, um, excuse me, as we rotate from the x-axis counterclockwise is a positive direction. So um, let's talk about coordinate points now. So each of these angle measures has a set of coordinate points associated with it. Keep in mind that this is a unit circle. So the radius is 1. So this is um, at 0, 0, the origin. So this location, keep in mind this is a radius of 1. So what do you think the coordinate point would be here on this first quadrantal? Yeah, it would be 1, 0. The x coordinate is 1, the y coordinate is 0. So now let's do this one. We're going to take care of all the quadrantals first. If you remember, quadrantal is a vocabulary word that means, you know, this x and y axis. Those are called the quadrantals. <clears throat> so here, right here at the top of the circle, let's see, x would be 0 and y would be 1. Okay, over here to the left side of the circle, let's see, x would be negative 1, y would be 0. And then the last quadrantal at the bottom, let's see, x would be 0, y would be negative 1. So let's kind of reach back at our memory and, uh, our memory and remember what 
Does cosine, is cosine associated with the x or the y? Okay, so cosine theta is associated with the x-coordinate, and sine theta is associated with the y-coordinate. So that's just something to keep in mind. So if I asked you, let's see, if I asked you what is sine of pi over 2? We see pi over 2 at the top here, and sine of pi over 2 would be the y-value, which is 1. So sine of pi over 2 would be 1. Okay, that's just kind of getting us used to how we relate sine and cosine to these coordinate points. Okay, if I asked you what cosine, what is cosine of pi? Okay, cosine of pi, so we find pi. Cosine is the x-coordinate, so cosine of pi would be negative 1. And so forth around the circle. Okay, so now let's work on the 30, 60, 90 ones, the blue. I have them written in blue, those coordinate points. Now, these coordinate points are just, I mean, it's 1 half root 3 over 2. Those are the, the numbers that go with 30, 60, 90s. So, how can we decide which is which? Well, if you take a look at this angle, that's pi over 6, is it longer along the x-axis or the y-axis? Well, let's think about that. So it's longer along the x-axis. So the x-coordinate needs to be bigger. So as we compare root 3 over 2 and 1 half, which one of those numbers is larger? Yeah, root 3 over 2 is larger. So if the x-axis part, if it lays longer along the x-axis, that means the x is going to get the bigger number, which is root 3 over 2, and the y will get the smaller number. So let's look at this other 30, 60, 90 here in the first quadrant. All right, is, is, is this angle measure longer along the y-axis or the x-axis? Okay, yeah, it's longer along the x axis, excuse me, the y axis. See how it's taller? It's longer along here. So that means the y value is going to get the bigger number. Okay, and then the x value will get the smaller number. Okay, now the great thing about this is, you know, we just reflect. So if you would focus on, you know, this location for just a moment. What we're going to do is we're going to reflect over the x-axis to this location, and we're going to find that coordinate point. The distances are the same, so it's still going to be, you know, root 3 over 2 at the beginning and 1 half. What is different is the sine. To the right of the y-axis, uh, x is positive. But now we're below the x-axis, sine is negative. So I just, it's the same coordinate point, I just changed the sine because of where it is. So same thing right down here. It's the same coordinate point as above. I am just going to change the sine of the y-coordinate because we're underneath the x-axis. All right, so once we know these numbers, these right here, we can just reflect all the way across. I mean, let's go ahead and reflect across the y-axis. Let's look at this. So let's compare this one to this one. Okay, so we're reflecting across the y-axis. So what is negative over here? Yep, that's right. The x-coordinate is negative over here. The y-coordinate is still positive. Okay, I just changed the sign of the x-coordinate. Up here, again, we're going to, let's just take a look. I'm going to compare this one and this one. So again, it reflects across the y-axis. And the x-coordinate is now negative, and the y-coordinate stays positive. Okay. As we move into the third quadrant, it's still a reflecting process. We can think of it as matching this one and this one. Okay. So our coordinate points would match. It's just what are the signs? 
Okay, so x is negative over here and y is negative. So both of those coordinates are going to be negative, the root 3 over 2 and the 1 half. All right, so now let's work on the top ones and the bottom ones. Those are uh, reflecting. Again, the same coordinate point, it's just that both coordinates are negative because we're in the third quadrant. So what have we done? We have just written out the coordinate points for all of the 30, 60, 90s. They're all done. So if I asked you, what is cosine of 11 pi over 6? Cosine of 11 pi over 6. So we see this is 11 pi over 6, cosine is the x, so that would be root 3 over 2. Okay, and if I asked you, well, what is sine, what is sine of 7 pi over 6? So we'd look over here at 7 pi over 6, sine is, the y, is associated with the y coordinate, and that would be negative 1 half. All right, lastly, let's put our coordinate points with the 45, 45, 90s. Those I have in green. Okay, so those are in green. So the 45, 45, 90, I think is the easiest because the x and y coordinate are identical. It's root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. I mean, that, that's what it is. So as we go through our reflecting process, uh, we reflect down below the x-axis, we reflect down here. We know that the x-coordinate stays positive, but the y-coordinate is negative. Okay. Then as we reflect across the y-axis over to 3 pi over 4, we see the um, x-coordinate is going to be negative and the y coordinate is going to be positive. And our last reflection, as we reflect down here to 5 pi over 4, we see that both of those coordinates are negative because both x and y are negative down there. All right, we just generated our very first unit circle from scratch. Okay, that's something that you would need to be able to know how to do. So now let's use that concept and let's practice. Let's practice some um, unit circle values. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to draw a little coordinate plane every time. I need to place where that angle is so I can figure out what the um, x and y coordinates are. So 45 degrees is one of the 45, 45, 90s. It's right there in the first quadrant. We know that cosine is the x. We know that coordinate point is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. So cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Okay. Now let's look at 135 degrees. So 135 degrees, let's see, that's 90. 135 would be right here. Okay, so sine is y. We're still positive. So that's going to be root 2 over 2. That one is also a 45, 45, 90. How can I tell? How can I tell? Well, if I, let's just say, how can I tell? All right, so this is 45 degrees. I add 45 to that and I get 90 degrees. I add 45 to that and I get 135 degrees. I add 45 to that and I get 180 degrees. And I would just continue around the unit circle, adding 45. Those are going to be my um, um, my 45, 45, 90s. All right. So the negative 225. Now, if you're comfortable with negative uh, angle measures, we would just go backwards. Negative 90, negative 180, negative, that would be negative 270. That's too far. So negative 225 would put us here. It's another. 45, 45, 90. If you're not comfortable with them, we would just add 360 degrees to it. So 360 um, minus 225. 
Let's see, what is that? So we've got 360 minus 225. That's going to give me 135, which is actually in the same spot as B. That was 135 also. So we're in the same spot. Now we want the cosine of that spot, though, and that's x. Cosine goes with the x coordinate, and that's where cosine is negative, or x is negative over there in the second quadrant. So it would be negative root 2 over 2. All right, uh, last one on this first part. So we've got th negative 315. Again, if you're comfortable, we would just rotate around. Negative would be here. If you're not comfortable, just add 360 to it. Oops, add 360 to it, and that would give me 45 degrees, which puts me you know, right here. So sine in that location is a 45, 45, 90, would be root 2 over 2. All right, so now let's move into radians. Radians are way more fun anyway. Um, okay. So I've had questions like, how do I know whether it's a 45, 45, 90, or a 30, 60, 90? Well, look at the denominator. See, these denominators are fourths. So these are going to be 45, 45, 90s. Okay, look at these denominators. These are 3, 6, and a 3. These are going to be 30, 60, 90s. That's just the way that it, it works. Um, we can tell by the denominator. So let's draw this. So negative pi over 3 would be down here. If we're not comfortable with a negative, we would add 2 pi. But of course, we need a common denominator. You know how fractions work. So that would be 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3. That would be 5 pi over 3, which in our counting, as we count, that's 10 pi over 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here's 10 pi over 6. Now we want cosine there. Let's see, let's think about this. Cosine is the x. Is this longer or on the x or the y? Yeah, it's longer along the y. So the y one is going to be bigger. The y one is going to be the root 3 over 2. The cosine is going to be the 1 half. Now, is that where cosine is positive or negative? X is positive or negative? It's positive. So it's on the right side of the y-axis. Whew, all these things, right? All right, let's look at pi over 6. Here's pi over 6 right here. Um, what is longer? Let's see, it's longer along the x-axis. So that means the y is going to be the smaller number, which is 1 half. Okay, so now, by the way, on the 30, 60, 90s, you only have two choices. It's either 1 half or root 3 over 2. I mean, that's all you got. I mean, it's a 50, 50 chance if you don't know. It's 1 half or root 3 over 2. The only thing that um, is a little bit different is depending on the quadrant, it could be positive or negative. I mean, that's it. Okay, 5 pi over 4. Let's count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 5 pi over 4 right there. Okay, so we know the 45, 45, 90 is sort of just the root 2s over 2s. And so that's sine, which is y. So that would be negative root 2 over 2. Okay, so let's do a cosine one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 pi over 4 is right here in the fourth quadrant. Let's see, and it's cosine. Cosine is x, which is positive over here, so that would just be root 2 over 2. Okay, hopefully you're getting a little bit more comfortable with this. Um, the last row is tangent. I'm just going to a reminder out there. Remember, tangent is equivalent to sine over cosine. And remember, sine goes with the y and cosine goes with the x. Just a, um, a reminder. Okay, so tangent of negative pi over 3 is actually the same angle measure that's up there. It's right here. For tangent, let's just write the coordinate point down. So we know that it's longer along the y. So it's going to be 1 half negative root 3 over 2. 
And to find tangent, we're going to do a fraction. We're going to put the y coordinate over the x coordinate. So negative root 3 over 2 over 1 half. Um, some teachers teach us this keep change flip. Remember to fix your complex fraction. Keep the top, change division to multiplication, and flip the bottom. When you do that, you're going to get an answer of negative root 3. Okay. Let's look at tangent of pi over 6. So pi over 6 is right here. Let's write its coordinate point. Let's see, it's longer along the x-axis. So x is going to be bigger, root 3 over 2, 1 half. Okay, let's do our fraction. So it's y over x. I do my keep change flip, do my complex fraction. And that gives me, what does that give me? It gives me 1 over root 3. Now, I hate to be, you know, spoil the fun, but for all the 30, 60, 90s, tangent of any of the 30, 60, 90s is going to be either root 3 or 1 over root 3, either positive or negative. I mean, that, that's your only choice. Now let's look at the 45, 45, 90s. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 pi over 4 is right here. Let's write its coordinate point. That's negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. And do our fraction, the y over the x, and that just gives me a 1. Okay, that is 1. Last one, 7 pi over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's 7 pi over 4. Let's write the coordinate point down root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2, right, x is positive, y is negative. Okay, so let's do our fraction. So we've got negative root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, and that gives us a negative 1. All right, so now let's move to our last part of this lesson, which is reference angles. So that's a lot of... Um, it's a lot of information up there. So what? let's just boil it down. So basically, a, re, a reference angle is always positive and always acute or right. It's either an acute angle or a right angle, period, always. Okay, I have a little diagram that's been drawn down here, kind of give you a, a little bit of a, I don't know, some guidance on how you find the reference angle. So the reference angle, this is really, really important. It's between the x-axis and the terminal side. Never, ever, ever the y-axis. Always the x-axis and the terminal side. Okay. So let's take a look at these down here. Just so this is guidance. You don't have to memorize the formulas. You can just kind of use common sense. So if the angle is in the first quadrant, the reference angle and the angle are the same. By the way, this is a Greek letter um, alpha. That's what they usually use to, to denote reference angles. Okay. If you're in quadrant two, then you would take 180 minus the angle measure or pi, depending on what unit of measurement you're in, or pi minus the angle measure. I mean, that's just what you would do to find reference angle. If you're in quadrant three, like this example, what would you do to find the reference angle? You would take your angle and you would subtract pi from it, or 180 if you're in degrees. And then if you're in quadrant four, to find the reference angle, if you're in radians, you would do two pi minus the angle, or 360 degrees minus the angle, depending on what you are. All right, so that's just some guidance. So what do we need to do? We need to find these reference angles. First of all, let's figure out which quadrant they're in. That's gonna be important. So let's get rid of, let's get rid of some of these full rotations. So I take out 360, I get 706. Take out another 360, I get 346. Okay, 
So here we go. Now we've got it narrowed down. So our angle, so all the way around is 360. So 346 would be somewhere, you know, along there. So right around here, that would be 346 degrees. So we need to find our um, reference angle. So what do we do? Well, it's kind of common sense, right? If I go all the way around, isn't it 360? So what if I took 360 and I just subtracted 346 from it? Wouldn't I get this little spot right here? Yeah, I sure would. So our reference angle is going to be 14 degrees because that's 14. Okay, last one. All right, so here, now that's a bit crazy. We have 43 pi over 3. Woo. Okay, 2 pi in this scenario would be 6 pi over 3. Let's see. So how many, how many multiples of 6 are in 43? What, 6 times 7 is 42, right? So what if we take out uh, 42, because that's all, 6 pi over 3 is one full rotation. So let's take out... 42 pi over 6 and that gives me negative pi over 6 okay I'm still not there's still not enough let's take out another so negative pi over 6 plus 6 pi over 3 and actually I am so goofy that's over 3 such a goofy over 3 okay so plus 6 pi over 3 gives me 5 pi over 3 all right, so that's where we are. We're at 5 pi over 3. Okay, so which is 10 pi over 6, right? We counted in 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so here is 10 pi over 6 or 5 pi over 3. Okay, that's what that is. That's 5 pi over 3. So we need this. Hmm, what are we going to do? Well, if we go all the way around, it's 2 pi, and we said 2 pi in thirds is 6 pi over 3, so let's do 6 pi over 3 minus 5 pi over 3, and that gives us, what, pi over 3. So my reference angle is pi over 3. All right.